again everybody back to another week well as most of you know if you're in Ireland it has been a horrendous week of rain and more rain and more rain today is Friday and we finally have a little bit of sun so it's great to see it so with this opportunity I'm going to just try and get out my plants from the kitchen that have come up that salad greens edible flowers and actually all the beetroot have come up I'm gonna get them into the tunnel and also this week I want to just give you an idea of what we have in regards to land and what we plan to do with it so I've done a little drawing which I'm going to show you a little bit later on of the three acres that we have and how we plan to use it and it might just help other people with their own self-sustaining gardens and whatever or what you know or just with a little bit of planning really as to you know where we want to go with it and I thought I haven't really shown you we've shown you the major field here which is going to be our big one for growing or it's going to be really the only place to grow but we haven't really shown you the other fields so might just do that with you today show you the plan on paper some of the plan on paper hasn't actually happened yet so it's all a bit of a dream but we'll yeah we'll see how we go but first of all we're just going to take a quick look in the tunnel because now it's dry and sunny and up i need to get using it and my first thing is to create some shelves I want to create shelves here to put the plants and these I'm going to use the larch that we have left over from the house. These are four inches I think and we have seven inches of a gap here. So with two of these it's eight so they're too, too wide but we want to use the larch because it's anti-rot, pretty hard wearing for outside work even though they won't be outside. Let's have a quick look on this. Oh my golly, it's 23 degrees. <gasps> yeah, I could live in here. Okay, so I brought two larch boards in. I decided to do three meters, so I've got, I can do six meters of shelves. There aren't actually any brackets on the very end gable, so I can only, I have to come in a meter from the end. So it's a meter from either end, it'll be six meter shelf. And I'll do two three meter separate ones and I had an idea that if I just cut out the slots around these bars this one might just fit in so I'm going to just have a quick go at that and see if I can cut those out effectively Actually, probably this one I did because there was a bolt sticking out but on this one the bolts aren't sticking out that much so do, I didn't need to take so much off but anyway it'll be fine there'll be a nice tray will sit on that anyway and then to get rid of this actually before I do anything um, 
I'll have to take a little bit off this, but certainly doesn't need to be as much as I was thinking. And same here. So that's pretty good. I had to go away and put on a t-shirt. I am sweating in here. It is 24 degrees. Holy crap. Anyway, I'm keeping going. I've got one lot done here. You can see all the way down through shelves and I'm just starting the other side. So I want to get all this done, then I'm going to show Rob how amazing it is. So take this one down, have it marked. And I just need to cut it. I just um, thought I'd just continue on with the plan of showing you the land really and what's going on. You may just have to ignore a lot of the mess that's going on. Just a brief one on the field. We have a pump house here in the corner. Behind the pump house we have a section that isn't roofed which we're planning to use for maybe a garden shed or storage area for tools we can still put a roof on this section here. Part of it is roofed, we, we just need to finish it really. In this corner then, we have a lot of rocks and a little bit of a soggy area in the middle. So kind of thinking this might lend itself to some kind of a pondy area in the future, not sure exactly what we're going to do. When the caravan eventually disappears, we will move it down to a lower field. Then we will use this space, I would have thought, for maybe chickens, ducks or something. Hello, Losty. How are you? Um, Losty's had been spayed last Wednesday, so she's looking a bit rough. The far corner, as you know, is orchard. It's made up of apples, pears, cherry, and plums hoping that will come on well i have three apple trees here at the back as well which seem to be starting to bud now actually we seem to have leaves on quite a few of these now which is quite exciting this one is coming coming along nicely it's a plum this one is looking really good actually what is this this is a pear so lots of buds coming there in fact this may have been the one that had been attacked no it wasn't um anyway uh, coming down the field we have our compost area here actually before i talk to you about that this plant i just want to ask any of you out there who might know a bit more about plants than i do this plant was absolutely running rampant behind the farmhouse when we first moved in i rather like it it grows into a very large tree sort of bush and i wanted to keep it so we just put it in the circle in our growing circle here. It hasn't done a whole lot, but it has taken and it seems to like it here. Um, clearly it is quite happy with the wind, the rain and the cold we get. So I'm quite pleased with it really. But if anybody knows what it is or is able to tell me what it is from just looking at the outside of it here, the bark is kind of like a gray brown. This looks like new shoots coming here. 
but it just has these lovely le leaves. They almost look like f a fig tree, but uh, certainly a fig tree wouldn't have survived the winter here and be as vibrant as this is. We have this telegraph pole here at the, in the middle of the field and along the line of the telegraph pole we have put a hedge. The hedging trees were all native hedging. Beech, rowan, crabapple, bindle, all sorts of things uh, went in and it just goes the length of the field there. Now what we plan to do is in front of this hedge sort of to this side, the left, we plan to put a dead hedge and the reason for this is I have a feeling that this hedge is going to be really hit by the wind. So we thought if we section off the field in half with a dead hedge then it will help everything, um, support everything growing including this hedge and everything in my growing circle. So that's the plan. Hopefully that'll take off and we'll be okay there. The lower field here, we the very bottom we have hedged, I think we did show you. Again, all native hedging along the hedge line by the road. Funny, at this time of year, you can really see the road. In the summer, you can't see the road because of the growth. So hoping our hedging will help as well there at the side and at the side of the, the roadside there. And also then coming up, we've done three lines of coppice woodland. I have just had an email this morning from Quilta. I reached out to somebody, a contact that I had through my B course and they have told me that they have some more trees. So I'm going to do another two lines um, and they will be red alder, and Italian alder. They're also going to supply us with five limes. Limes, I think, are used more so for woodworking and that sort of thing. So this is my line of alder, my line of willow, and my line of silver birch here. Down here then in the bottom of the field was where we were planning to put my first hive. Not sure if it will be sort of here in this corner. I had planned for the opposite corner, but I think it's too shady, but now I've done reading, I'm thinking maybe it is actually quite sheltered and maybe that's a good idea. A little bit more research to do on that one. Below what will be our dead hedge, above the coppice, in the middle section, top end section of the field here. This is where we plan to have some animals, not quite sure what they will look like yet. This is where we plan to put those and we can section this maybe into three smaller little paddocks or fields or two maybe. Just here on the back side of our driveway as it were and between the driveway and the field we have these Leylandi. These Leylandi are actually the our power lines are going through them so all of these Leylandi are going to come out. Uh, not such a bad thing really not a terrible, not a tree I particularly like. And then there's, they're grown, a lot of them are overgrown in here in Ireland at the moment. And they just sort of take over really. And they cause an awful lot of shade there. Now you can see my washing line is set up but nicely underneath them at the moment. These are all coming out. So this will really open up our area for light. The ESB are going to take these out. Previously they had just chopped the tops where the lines were. The lines follow down through uh, through here and then come out. But we've suggested now that rather than keep topping them, let's just get rid of them. They'll fell them and we'll look after processing them then for firewood. I think we may have to wait a couple of years to use them as firewood because they're very sappy, but they're coming out. And I'll just show you then what the rest of that driveway looks like going down towards the lower road. So this is the driveway and um, we have the Leylandi are on the left with a lot of bat boxes put up by the previous owners. We do have a lot of bats. There's a lot of wildlife in these trees. And then on the other side, we have this lovely stone wall, which really is just a pile of moss at the moment because it doesn't get a lot of sun. But these trees are sycamore and the odd spruce. We've won very large spruce here which we have been suggested to have taken down because spruce apparently are very shallow rooted 
and a wind can take them down. So when we take these Leylandi down, it will really open up this side. But we'll continue walking down. Um, we don't use this driveway a lot. It's quite dangerous. Entrance onto the road um, for trucks and for deliveries, it was very handy during the house build. And, um, but now we have everything really that we need. So we have actually locked this gate um, and maybe we'll continue to use it if we need it and it's nice to have but um, at the moment it's just it's not a safe e entrance exit onto the road and with my daughter learning to drive at the moment no I think we'll we'll keep it off off limits at the moment um, but down below we have a lot of rhododendron a lot of hydrangea there that you can see I started to cut back and I need to go down and see what else we have down there because some really beautiful shrubs when we came in the summertime they all blossomed and it was just really lovely to have that um, so yeah we'll, we'll keep it here but and, it, and we love to have the driveway but um, we won't really be using it um, as much as we perhaps thought we might just see some selen. I think this is selendine coming out here. Really beautiful. So this is the entrance into our lower field just off the driveway here and we plan to do a little bit of drainage here. We get a lot of water from the yard above here. This is our yard and our the bottom of our barns, as it were, and it and it flows through this another lovely stone wall here, it flows through and just sits in the grassy area here. But we thought if we leveled it and just drained it, it could be possibly an area where we would position the caravan. We may have some branches, high branches to take off there. But the lower field goes starts narrow and widens out at the end. Haven't got a lot of plans for the end of it there. Um, again, this is opening up into the top of our yard, as it were. And we have this really lovely stone wall, which runs the length of it here. And I've got a lot of work when I have a look and see what Don and Ben have done with their stone walls in the corner house. but project um but you know yeah i could do with your help here don but anyway going further on then we have um there is a drainage point here and we'll probably keep that or maybe pop a pipe in from the upper yard the barns there that's the end of barn four that you can see uh and then the field widens out into a section here just show you. Rooney loves going down here because it's a real wonderland isn't it Rooney? So the field widens out here at the bottom and you can see the fence ahead that's between us and the neighbours and it heads up then to the back of the barns and the top of our field which I'll show you from the other side. This field then is also bound on one side for all of these very tall Spruce, I think they are trees. I'll show you the, let's see where we're being spied on by a little kitty up there. The cats absolutely love uh, running around this uh, wilderness. Oh, look, speak as I speak. Here's the other one. Come on, Lusty. Um, Lusty follows Rooney everywhere. So wherever Rooney goes, Lusty goes. And there's Clementine up there, Lusty's mom. So the spruce. Um, bind the line there behind, around the barns. We don't quite know what to do with those. Um, it would be nice to be able to take them out, some of them out maybe. Again, we've been told they're very shallow rooted. We have to be careful about them falling, but the view across the valley then is just really lovely. Um, funnily enough, today you can't see Mount Gabriel, but it's there, the mountain in the background, Mount Gabriel. This is the top field here. We'll walk back down. Here in the bottom of this lower field have quite a large pondy area. Again, 
haven't done much about it. It is quite close to the road, but it's absolutely full of water. Isn't it lusty? Yes. Yes, it is. And I don't see any frogs in there, but we do have a lot of frogs. So that's maybe something we can develop later on. This, as far as I know, this is willow, goat willow, I think, and a lot of goat willow and sycamore around this wetland area, or we should call the wildlife wilderness, or kitty wilderness, maybe, with all these cats. So as we walk back up from the lower field, you'll see I have a very beautiful stone wall in front of us. Another stone wall. This one was what used to be like the cottage garden of the farmhouse. And I suppose we only ever knew it as that. Now you have to ignore all of the rubbish that is here. But at the moment it just is full of shrubs. Some lovely shrubs, some lovely flowering shrubs. And I believe the old lady who used to live here very much prize this part as her little garden with the little gate and everything. Um, however, when we did a little bit of research on the maps, we could see that actually this was a house prior to the farmhouse. So we're interested in doing a bit more with this. The imagination runs wild here. Um, it could be a greenhouse, it could be a, an eating area. We could move the shrubs to the growing circle or to the to the to the field front field, and really have it as a nice area for sitting. Or I don't know. That's a that's another big project in the making there. But while we're here, I will just show you that. This front area, as I said, we don't use that lower entrance for coming in out. We use the top one um, now. And so this space in front of what we are going to make the back door, because this is at the front of the farmhouse, but we're going to make it the back. Um, and I'll show you how that's going to look um, when we go around the other side. But we hope to put maybe four beds in front here in front of the house and just stone it so that we just want to stop people driving up and down on top of it and so in order to do that just open it out into a into a nicer space for for usage in the, in the summertime the house faces direct south and so this area here last summer we sat here on so many evenings um, because it was just so hot and the front of the house gets so much heat so that's that's why we want to create this area into more of a usable space for us rather than a driveway as such so just below here um, I can't show you too much of the house because it would be a giveaway for um, the videos on Saturdays we've got a, a couple of videos yet to bring us up to scratch um, with where we are currently but the, these are the barns that we have um, that came with the house and um, we're currently uses, using to store all sorts of things. We split them into four barns. We have barn one, two, three and four. Whether we'll keep them all, I don't know. We'll keep some of them and maybe try to re-roof some bits of it. Uh, we certainly don't need all of them and we plan that this will actually be um, difficult to see now with Rob and his boat uh, parked here but there's a lovely view if you can imagine looking out this way across above the lower field where we were just there and if we remove some of the spruce trees we will be able to get a lovely view and a lovely sunset of Mount Gabriel looking that way and that was the idea from the house when you see the rest of the build in the coming weeks you'll see the views that we get from the kitchen windows and doors um, looking out this way so maybe we won't keep all of the barns because you don't want to necessarily look out a barn but at the same time they're really well built we do have leaky roofs but they have served their purpose in a lot of ways for us and so we do want to kind of keep them um i don't know watch that space hello rob what are you doing 
So the boat has just suddenly arrived here in the yard and Rob is very busy inside it. Do you want um, to tell us what you're at today? So when we put our house up for sale, the boat was in front of our house. So we had to move to a boat yard and it sat in a boat yard for two years, maybe a little bit more, maybe almost three years, for, maybe. We only used it a handful of times really since we got it. So we have to tidy it up basically. It's very dirty. Um, there's lots of, I'll show you now, up by our solar panel. Lots of algae all over the side. We have to kind of clean that up. And just the ground basically, just give it all a good clean. We've decided to pull the plunge and get a new engine for the back of it. I think we're going to try and get the whole thing ready to go exploring in the summer. Maybe the place where we live, it's like an archipelago. There's like dozens of islands around here, some very famous ones and some that was used in Star Wars. We'd like to get exploring them in the boat. Actually, let us know in the comments if you like. Would you like us to record them? This is very much kind of like our farm and the build, but we're going to be going on adventures in the boat. We're going to be fishing. We're going to be camping on these islands. A lot of these islands actually were evacuated by the Irish um, government around the 50s and 60s because a lot of the young people emigrated and left kind of elderly people on the islands and the Irish government couldn't guarantee that they could send out doctors or medical services if there was a storm. So they evacuated the islands and a lot of the buildings are still remain on the islands as they were in the 50s. And it's a lovely piece of Irish history to go. I don't think we have any footage from some of the islands we explored in the past. We went to some in Connemara in a kayak and it was magical to walk around that Ireland. It was like you were transported back a hundred years ago. So we're going to be doing that. Let us know in the comments. Do you want to come with us? Shall we record these adventures? Is, you know, fishing. Uh, fishing is another thing as part of our self-sufficiency. Um, we'd like a diet of almost 80% fish. We were able to do that before with the boat and with spear fishing. As much as you want to, maybe you want to see our growing in our farms. You want to see us catching fish and going out and going at the wrecks and I might do some free diving and spear fishing is maybe I'm getting carried away. Let us know what I you want to see. To be <laughs> <and tour>. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so yes, that's a little bit. So the yard obviously is incredibly handy for this sort of thing. Um, Rob is getting the boat ready at the moment to take it off to a company who are going to fit the new engine. So he's just getting that ready now, but you can see it's, it's just super <laughs> handy to have. As I said, you have to ignore the bits of mess that we have, but we do have a lot of wood still here. This this is the outside larch that we were doing the house in. There'll be a video all about that coming on next. And I actually have some big plans for these. This is what our wood came in. We did have to buy quite a lot of wood for the winter um, for the stove. And it came in these sort of big pallet boxes. That's definitely going to be another video on creating a chicken house I would say out of these we've lots and I suppose part of what we try to do here with everything that we have is recycle as you can see there you can see all the old sleepers that we took from the house and um, Rob's already made a very nice bathroom sink out of that so yeah lots to do and lots to recycle up here again this is one of my favorite stone walls we have a lot of stone walls. Now, a bit difficult to see when you've got a cast iron bath thrown in front of it, but this stone wall was just something that I just loved from the minute we came. And this follows the path all the way around the house. Okay, a bit mossy here and there. All the way around, through here, this will actually be a path eventually around the house and it comes out at the front door. So we plan to try to maybe not completely clear it. I quite like the moss, how the moss falls on some of it. Um, uh, this is the back of our bedroom, as it were. It's fully cladded now. This wall separates the back of the farmhouse to our upper back field as it were which i'm going to take you to now then this leads up to 
the top entrance which I love because in the summer the sun just rises over the mountain there and catches all the yellow gorse and it's just beautiful um, this is a sort of a stone wall as well except this is very much a very large rock which runs all the way up the top of this driveway again when we first came to see the house this driveway was just full of oh they look like white bluebells what are they called i'll put it in there in the comments but they were just it was just full of white going up the the driveway they haven't come out yet i don't think also you'd have noticed in the summer that we get a lot of mushrooms up this driveway and i did a I did an episode on all of those mushrooms. We have a few bat boxes again here, one here. We have, an, oh yeah, another three or four there. And there's actually one that's fallen down here. So yeah, again, lots of, lots and lots of wildlife. And this, this is the top entrance that we use. And so, which is fine, but again, um, like I said, we don't want to use this as an entrance coming down to the house. We want to stop cars coming down. So I'll show you what our plan is going forwards. I'm just going to walk up here. We hope to have a step up here eventually. This is just above the driveway and we have another gateway. So when we first noticed that we had a second gateway here, it sort of lends itself to being the main entrance for the house and maybe the little gateway here where you saw the car and that I was talking about with the lovely wall, maybe that will just be an entrance for walking and for walking up onto the top road. We get a lot of walkers walking on the road here um, and parking up here um, because it is a lovely walk to keep going up the mountain and down that road. So here, looking back now, this is the area that we could either turn into a parking area. I'm not sure, there's lots to be cleared. A few trees possibly might need to come out, but this is where we hope that cars will enter the house from, this driveway. Oh, and just while we're up here, I'll just show you this. I'm not sure what this is it has a little pink flower and it seems sort of bush like um, with these leaves if anybody knows what this is it's really beautiful so just coming back here this little path leads us to where our current well is which is here um, and this is what we're currently using so this is what we had supplied, which is what supplies the farmhouse at the moment um, and what we're currently using. However, we knew when we purchased the house that this isn't sufficient enough in the summertime and we did have it run out in the summer, which is why we decided to go with a new well. And we have a little pathway going into the side here, but we plan to, from this top side here enter the top field now from the top field we could create a driveway down and that would bring us to what would be at the moment is the back of the house but we hope to make the front it would mean creating a driveway down this way so that um I don't want to show too much of the house because I don't think Rob has covered all of the cladding yet. Um, but this would be our entrance as it were. Um, hard to know. It's a super field again. Um, and we have a lovely view over to the other side of the valley over there, which is heading towards Dunbeacon and Durris. So it's just lovely, lovely mountainside really. And again, the sun sets on that side. So it's really lovely. When we were starting to take down one of the barns, Ash, my son, left this big lump of rock here. This was because we are planning that this will be some kind of a driveway eventually to the house. And so we had ideas that maybe we would use the rocks to start that 
driveway off. We did put hedging along the fence line here. The fence line obviously is the other side is our neighbor's field. And then the fence line runs down and we've got some hedging in here. This one is really starting to shoot off here. Again, without really looking through them all, I'm not sure what that one is. And they run down to the end of this shed here. And yes, it's another shed. So this shed at the end of here, we I will show you what we're doing with this at the moment. This is where we have our wood. We, it, we're thinking maybe this could be a garage area that you would drive down to from that gateway at the top. Not sure quite yet how that will work, but we did take down some trees and so we have them stored here, some kindling, little pieces of wood. And then in this one, we store some sort of more decent sized pieces and some offcuts from the house, which we hope to use. And this is actually Toffee's house. Hello, Toff. Toffee likes sleeping here in the daytime. Oh dear, we're not too happy because we've been woken up. Okay, we'll close the gate and we'll say goodbye. Are we Toff? So all of Rob's uh, offcuts from the roof we've stored here. Again, not ideal. You can see the light through the, through the roof there. So um, again, it needs it needs a little bit of work to make it completely waterproof. However, we had a lot of rain last night, and um, there does seem to be the the wood does seem to be staying quite dry. Possibly this wood here that is stacked here needs to go in there too. Come on, Rooney, let's go. Let's leave Toffee alone, Rooney. Rooney. So that's our top field at the back and um, we have one large maple tree that we haven't actually planted yet. And I had an idea that maybe we would do something here where we'd put it in the middle and create a driveway around. I'm not sure yet what we're planning to do because it's still so much in the, we discover so much, the more we clear, the more we discover. You know, we, we still, if we clear the very top piece that I was showing you where we previously had the boat just in front of the gate, maybe that's enough to have a parking area there and just have a path down to the front door. Just have a look at this lovely Belfast sink just in the wall here. I love that. We have a lot of Belfast sinks. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, behind the barn then that just leads back down to the lower field, the wildlife wilderness as I call it. So we just have a stretch that runs down here and that just runs to here. There's sort of a little bit of a cement sort of a trackway into the barns and then you've got the lower field below these wall, these two walls again looking across the valley like oh just show you here just by this wall we get super foxgloves there's one of them um, and they just line this wall here it makes it really look quite beautiful i think there is a picture actually one of our first pictures when we came is of that wall looking down across the valley with the foxgloves so just a quick to the gardeners this tree um i'd love to know the name of it it is what was to, I could only describe as a red poker tree when we arrived and they're just starting to come out now um, and it is absolutely on fire with these and um, they come out quite early sort of April May and the whole tree has this sort of red poker um, like little flowers on it the leaves look like this nothing out of the ordinary really. The bark is sort of rough red kind of bark. Um, I only want to know because we absolutely love it and if we decide to move it it's, it would be quite a job but I'd really love to keep it. But if anybody out there might know what this is that would be amazing. So this is just a little drawing of 
our plot and I thought it just helps to see where what we have and where it is and rather than me pointing and saying this is such such and such field or whatever so here we have the farmhouse in the center um, some of the little pieces in here we haven't done yet but I sus we are just playing around with having four beds in front of the house this of course is driveway area as you know this is our top driveway here and the bottom driveway down here and what I was showing you today was that we're hoping to open up this area we previously had the boat here where we were storing it for the winter but we would open this area to possibly being an area where you would drive in and park at the back of the house which will be our front as it were I wasn't quite able to show you the very front of the building yet because that will come in the next couple of videos because we have transformed the front now with the larch so um, that's that area um, we have our little shed here where I was showing you where the wood was this may be a garage at some stage and then coming back down the driveway past these beds this was where we have the old stone cottage which really is sort of like a cottage garden now it's just shrubs the pump house where we plan to put our solar array the caravan at the moment where we're which we're still very much using the orchard in the far corner the growing circle with the polytunnel here we have the compost bins and the coppice woodland here which I showed you in the field today um, we hope to keep this going and use this to fuel our little stove that we use so much in the winter time this is the area that I'm hoping we will have animals in not sure what exactly yet um, also in either this corner or this corner we will have our bees this is the lower driveway I was showing you with the lovely stone walls and they curve around to here this is where we hope to reposition the caravan at some stage and then the field opens out into this wildlife wilderness as I call it a um, little bit of a pondy area here uh, and this is where these very tall spruce trees um, they sort of go all the way around the barn as it were these are the barns and then we also have all of this lovely stone walling which goes as a circle around the side of the house and on my favourite parts here this curved bit of wall um, and this is where I hope to put perhaps our maple tree that we still haven't planted um, and so this shows the whole area for you to see in a drawing uh, just very simple drawing just to be able to map out what we have it also actually helps us to be able to plan what to do next and where to put things my obviously my biggest thing next would be my potatoes which I think I will put below the tunnel or will use the tunnel structure to shield the wind from the taller things maybe like corn or sweet corn at this side so yeah it's nice to have um, everything in there and um, I hope that it helps you guys or gives you guys a better idea of um, what we're doing uh, and what what we have I suppose and so with that I'm going to finish up and um, talk to you next week uh, we'll be back in the garden again um, probably with potatoes and I will also give you an update on the growing in the tunnel since I removed the tomatoes from the kitchen here they have sprouted with the all sprouted within uh, a couple of days so they will all need to be um, moved on to their next positions as it were that brings us to the end and I hope you've all very much enjoyed it 
Um, we enjoy showing you what we're doing and our plans. As always, I want to thank all of you again for what means a huge, huge amount to us. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, do. We will keep going with our land development on Wednesdays and our house development on Saturdays. So we'll see you next week. Jackpot.